During our week-long stay in Kingston, New York, and the Hudson Valley, we had already done some really cool riding. Um, Minnewaska State Park and Mohonk Preserve were absolutely amazing. We had done some mountain biking, which was very East Coast style, uh, very New England style, super rocky and slow going. So on the Thursday, Ben and I decided to do more of a rail trail ride. Erin wanted to spend the day off the bike, so she went to a nearby town and did some hits of markets and restaurants and kind of did her own thing. She dropped Dylan off at a place where he decided he wanted to mostly hike a bike up a mountain for some reason. <laughs> um, yeah, there's more to that story. But anyways, so Ben and I took off on this loop that he had planned down to Poughkeepsie. I talked about this town in the stream the other Day and everybody had a different pronunciation. That's the one I'm going with. Anyways, there's two different rail trails that kind of go along this area on each side of the gunks or the Schwan gunks, um, the big ridge that if you watch the last video and I'll link it at the end of this one, you could see. And we left on the O and W trail, which is really cool. It was paved on the way out of town for a while, but then you could see it becomes much more rustic here. It reminded me of the OCA old Croton Aqueduct trail that we had ridden before. Um, we were actually expecting more of a smooth uh, rail trail. This is actually more up our alley. We enjoyed this more. There was pretty good, all natural scenery. You know, you could see these ledges and along the water and stuff like that. There was a slight detour you probably saw a little bit back there, but it was really easy to figure out there was a road that mirrored the trail. I'm guessing as you're watching this, that detour is already over. It just looked like it was going to be some repaving and there was a lot of new pavement back there anyway. So I think they were probably just finishing it. But yeah, here it is a lot more gnarly. This little thing here is extremely steep. I know the GoPro doesn't show it, but there used to be an older rail bridge there. So now you're kind of dropping down into the valley that the bridge would have went across. As you can see, we are hitting this part of the country at pretty peak fall foliage, which was really great. The only thing with this trail is there were some rough spots and some holes. Here you can see it even goes to single track for a little while. So it is one thing to be aware of. I, I would say in any season, but especially when it's leaf covered there were little spots that we were pointing out to each other little washouts and stuff like that um, filming with the GoPro or I'm looking backwards with his phone as he is here could get a little sketchy sometimes but again you know so even the surface was never that bad but you know gravel bike 38s would even be fine uh, we passed people on road bikes uh, which of course that's your choice I just the whole skinny tire thing to me anymore I just that's, I don't get it. Once in a while, I ride my vintage road bikes, but I prefer the comfort. This is actually kind of where the trail ends and uh, up through the parking lot of that little hardware store, we made a left. And this is where we started heading towards the gunks. Uh, talked a lot about the gunks in the last video, but it's kind of short for Shawan gunks, if that's how it's pronounced. But it's the easternmost ridge of the Appalachians, and it's this really cool ridge of bedrock. Uh, really beautiful. We had ridden all around Minnewaska State Park and the Mohonk Preserve. And on this day, we were going to go right up and over it, but on a road climb. It was one of the harder road climbs I've done in my life, just because where I live, our road climbs might get steep and punchy, but there's just nothing that long. And I really haven't traveled anywhere where I've done extremely long road climbs. So I think Ben said this was a two and a half mile climb that averaged 6.8 percent gradient uh, it definitely kicked up steeper than that but yeah so a long reasonably tough climb with a long amazing descent as you can see here so yeah a lot of fun to go bombing down this hill after making that climb i had been feeling a little tired by now from the trip you know starting off with higher ground hundo eight thousand feet of climbing and then just the mountain biking we had been doing so um, it was slow going for me on the climb. We went through then the town of New Paltz, which will be in other videos because we actually stopped there for dinner, really cool little town, before hitting another rail trail. Um, I believe it's the Hudson Valley Trail. Yes, it is the Hudson Valley Trail, which is also part of the Empire State Trail. If you're not familiar with, I've ridden parts of that. It's kind of more of a route that's made up of a bunch of different trails, but you could go from New York City to Albany, and then you could head west all the way to Buffalo, which would be the Erie Canal Trail at that part. But you could also keep going north past Albany all the way up to Canada. So it's basically this whole system of trails, and we were on the Hudson Valley river trail part of it so yeah we kind of this section we rode out and back here but we did make a loop on the way back as well so the one highlight out here for us anyways was 
the Hudson Valley Walkway. They've taken a old train bridge that goes over the Hudson River and turned it into kind of a pedestrian park. Uh, we spent a decent amount of time taking photos and stuff like that. One of the friends of the channel's channel, channel member told me to avoid it, and I don't know if that just meant that on certain days it's completely crushed with people. There are a lot of people out on this day, but again, this was a Thursday, and I think reasonably early in the day, so it wasn't too bad for us. We stopped and got apple cider donuts before we went over, and um, I think Ben even bought some extra ones for the road. Um, yeah. So this is out on the walkway and looking over at the Mid-Hudson Valley Bridge. Um, this bridge that they turned into this walkway was the only bridge between New York City and Albany that crossed the Hudson when it was built in the late 1800s. I know you guys are all here for the bridge content, so I'll make sure I give you a little bit of it. But yeah, there's interpretive signage all along the way, and there's actually an elevator right there. So um, I guess it's just a different way to get up there, or and I think it's probably glass front so you get cool views or something like that. I didn't look that much into it is of course we're riding bikes so we cross the whole bridge and so this bridge takes you into the city of Poughkeepsie 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 I like I said there's a big debate about it but yeah really cool views of the city from on the walkway we had a brewery picked out for lunch there was not a lot open at lunchtime we found almost anywhere we were in the Hudson Valley for some reason there's always places but you know, like this place had a bunch of options that if we were there in the evening, I would have looked at. But Millhouse Brewing turned out to be good anyways. It was expensive. Um, felt more like New York City pricing. Uh, the craft beers, uh, the beers they brewed were in the $10 range. And even our lunch menu was like 20 bucks. I mean, not outrageous, but, you know, when you're from Akron, Ohio, that's that's an expensive lunch and expensive beers. But they were good. Um, anyways, we decided, and so that's the bridge we went over first. We decided to take the... Uh, whatever road bridge on the way back to get a different view why not and make a loop out of it so yeah went over the suspension bridge we we're also stopping here taking photos and obviously making this video so yeah really cool um really really scenic again peak foliage so yeah beautiful ride so when we got back on the hudson valley trail uh, i didn't film too much of that as we had already ridden that but we took a couple roads and then we got on the Wallkill Trail. Um, so this is part of the Empire Trail just on the other side of the Gunks. And it started out being really, really cool. There was some cool natural stuff, bridges like this. And then it got like a little bit mundane for a sec, I don't know, a couple miles. And Ben even made a comment like through here, he's like, uh, not as exciting as the other trail. And as soon as he said that, we came out on these like, these kind of features here and then over another really cool old bridge with a view of a town below which i believe was rosendale and then we started seeing all these like like oven things carved into rock faces at the time we didn't know what they were but rosendale was a town that was um, known for the natural cement and here you could see where all these ovens were and it was a huge operation at one point it was like 70 percent of all the uh cement in the country was coming from here so there's it's the rocks that are around here so a lot of these big mines and stuff like that also at first we didn't know what those features were we're like look at these interesting rock features and all this stuff you could see some right here um I wasn't sure. I, I even said to Ben at one point, I think these are man-made. But then we researched it, and it's a whole big deal. They The industry completely shut down in the 70s as Portland cement, which is not natural as chemical processes has taken over because it dries much quicker, uh, apparently. Again, this is all Wikipedia and interpretive sign knowledge. But I guess one of the... Um, whatever you would call it, factories or mines and the whole process has started back up recently because people want to be able to fix up historical buildings with the right materials. So if you think the base of the Statue of Liberty, the Brooklyn Bridge, they're all held together with this Rosendale cement. So then it was just, yeah, a little matter of getting back through the country a little bit of a different way before we headed back home. So this was our second to last day, I believe, in Kingston. Uh, we really enjoyed our time there. The Hudson Valley is pretty incredible, um, especially in the fall, but I could imagine almost at any time of year, as people have told me, some of the places we mountain bike become really good cross country skiing places. And, you know, yeah, that's it. So next up will be the video from Nutmeg Nor Easter, which is gonna be 
a banger as the kids probably said 10 years ago so yeah if you like this kind of content remember to hit that like button check out our little store below and i will see you in the next one